Hello and welcome, this is the Spiritual Physicist, and welcome to another episode of Everything is Nothing. Now I want you to put down your books, and put down your Bibles, and turn off the internet, no wait, don't turn off the internet just yet, do that in a minute after I finish speaking, ha uh-huh. And then put down your records, and your CDs, and they turn off those web pages and those browsers, and stop looking for more information. Stop looking for research, this is not the X-Files. The truth isn't out there, the truth is in here. Now I don't mean in here, in this room, I mean... Say it to yourself, the truth is in here. It means inside your heart. The one and only place where you can find direct communication to God, the theory of communication science, or some field which pervades everything called the infinite field of everything. And that is what you want to be in touch with. The thing is, you've seen it all before. You keep looking for information outside of yourself. You keep looking for answers in a newspaper. One day it's a good feel, and then it's a bad, and then, oh my god, it's a good feel again. It's controversial. Why? I don't know. I think it's because the universe is controversial. I think everything, I think life is controversial. The word controversial means it's that way and it's that way. Everything is nothing. It's positive and it's negative all at the same time. It's kind of a bit like God, really. He's everything and nothing all at the same time. He's God and the devil. Shh. Yes, I said it. It's true. I'm sorry, my religious friends, but that just happens to be really the simplest way of looking at it. God must be everything. Everything can include the devil. That's scary image that's been implanted in your mind in fantastic marketing Coca-Cola fashion for, I don't know, 2,000 years or something. That's going to be a pretty good image. And according to latest quantum physics research, da, 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 everything is consciousness. Everything you know and everything you see, including you, is conscious or consciousness. Now we're getting to the point of what every single song in Hollywood has ever been trying to tell you, as well as every single film and the Matrix. Well, here we go. Down the rabbit hole. Are you ready? Okay, so if we are going to take the universe, and everything that we know it, to be conscious, and that God is a kind of consciousness, or Christ's consciousness, and in his image we are made. In his image? What does it mean in his image? Are we an image? What's an image? Is everything an image? If everything is consciousness, then everything must be an image. Oh my God, that's the way the world works. That's the way the universe works, stupid. Everything is built by images, by consciousness. And guess what? You're also conscious and have a consciousness, and you can do this. You can make images in your mind. You've been doing it since you were born. People put little images in your mind, and then the more they repeat them, the more they become true and important and grow. That's kind of how this whole marketing piece has been working, you know? They throw up images on the screen, and, and then you go, oh, wow, that's cool. And then you see it again later, and you go, oh, wow, it must be true, because I saw it twice. Oh, at least I think I did. I wasn't really paying attention. It must be in my subconscious mind somewhere. And this is the coolest trick ever. See, they'll say a bunch of words, and then they'll show you an image, but the image is highly suggestive of it, like another truth, which they're not allowed to say with words. This buzz is for you. See, they used to do it with, like, stop porn and boobies and things like that. They would, they would throw a thing on the TV, doing like a Mars bar, and then they would throw boobies next to it, and you'd be like, oh my god, I want that Mars bar. Maybe I'll get boobies if I eat it. Your brain finishes what they're trying to tell you. Only they've got a little bit more clever now, and they, they throw up, like, sentences or, or put an image on the screen, and your mind just sort of finishes it off, you know? And, that, and how your, when your mind finishes it off, what they put on the screen, you think that you came up with it. So it must be true, because nobody told you. So, if it came from me, it must be true, because I'm awesome. Exactly. That's how humans think. It's completely ridiculous. You can't tell them anything. And if you're clever, like a lot of science marketing guys, or your parents, a mum or dad or something, you know you can't tell your kids anything. Don't press the red button. Whoopsie, yep, too late. However, if you show a picture, or, or if you said don't press the red button, then you show a picture of the devil or some kind of terrible car crash after it happens on the screen to suggest that if they put the red button, then they were going to get squashed by a car. They might not do it. Uh, I guess. So, what do we know already? We know that God is everything, including nothing, because nothing part of everything, of course, that would be silly to one. And also that, yeah, here's up, down, and right, you know, black and white, uh, positive and negative, and all the other polar opposites that you can imagine, and a little bit in between, and a bit in between we will call information flow. Oh my god. Oh yeah, and there's this other thing which is called the Holy Spirit, which is also known as the Holy Spiral Spirit. Spiral, spirit, spiral, spirit, spiral. So, that basically clears that point up also, then. It's actually just science. Isn't that crazy? The, the religion, or, yeah, yeah, I guess religion is combining with science once again, and they're coming back in, in a marriage of happiness and fluffy meadows of bunnies. It's going to be amazing. But, yeah, the Holy Spirit is basically the Holy Spiral, and the spiral that you see in, in everything, you know, down the plug hole, the water goes, and as it flows, it makes a spiral, uh, hurricanes and tornadoes, and all of the plants and the Fibonacci sequency thing, which is really cool. So, yeah, it's kind of simple, really, isn't it? Oh, just quickly, another thing which they kind of mixed up also is the sun, S-O-N, Jesus uh, Christ, was also mixed up a little bit with the sun, which is S-U-N, which is the big fiery ball in the sky, which some people apparently call Lucifer, which is a bit stupid, because Lucifer's supposed to be the devil, only he's not the devil. Lucifer's actually the name of the rising light of the star, which is called, I think it's Mercury, 
Venus, or one of those two, which is rising above the horizon and looks like a ball of fire when it's rising, uh, you know, Lucifer rising. Anyway, yeah, so I don't know this confusing point about religion is that they say that the hell is all fiery and stuff and scary, and, and, and basically that's what the sun is, and the sun is the giver of all life and is conscious and is basically a single point of conscious intelligence in the sky. So, yeah, like, hell isn't fiery, heaven is kind of fiery, and you have to pass through that big ball of fire, which is the light at the end of the tunnel, on your way home. Don't forget to do that. Put it on the map, put it on your to-do list, on the fridge. Note yourself, do not forget to pass through the big fiery ball when I die. The Lord of the Rings, the one ring to rule them all. Yes, the fiery planet, which rules all the other ones, because they're all spinning around in a circle. Hmm, I wonder if that's where they got the Lord of the Rings story from. They always steal stuff from the just Can't come up with anything original these days. Anyway, so if you're thinking like, yeah, Jesus is in the sun, that's really stupid. And then you're like, oh, wait, what did I just say? Actually, that sounds about right. Mm. And yeah, the name for the sun in Hebrew was kind of like, yes, I guess, yes, and then yes. And then, then it's a nodding of the head. Yes, as uh, uh, an affirmation of, yeah, uh, that'll do. And it's also, yeah, I don't know. I I'll go and do a little bit more research because that was pretty interesting, that point as well. However, you're probably thinking now, all right, if Jesus is the sun or something, and that was made in God's image, you know, and it's just a reflection of God, so the sun is just a reflection of the consciousness of God, and now that's Christ consciousness, because now, now our sun is called Jesus and also Christ. So, yeah, like, alright, who's the devil then? Huh? I don't know if many of you heard of the planet Saturn, which sounds a little bit similar to Satan. Maybe all those Satan worshippers are just Saturn worshippers, you know? It's like they're big five rings of gaseous whateverness. And, yeah, well, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? And it kind of sort of blows my mind, at least. It, it still blows my mind, yeah. Satan, Satan, oh my gosh. How simple is the story, and how stupid are we for missing it? Oh dear. Shame on us. Anyway, so that bloke Jesus, I think that he was actually wandering around teaching this kind of stuff, called the Holy Science, and uh, a bunch of Romans strung him up on a, on a big cross. Uh, you know, the cross of the equinoxes, and, as, as it goes from summer to winter, anyway, yeah. And, and kind of, the cross kind of resembles that thing, the same thing he was teaching, which was, you know, uh, basically astrology. And that we are all uh, conscious individuals who are in control of our own destiny by uh, working with the image of Christ and uh, God's consciousness and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, basically we're all a bit stupid, really, and we've been manipulated for about like 2,000 years by this, uh, this monetary system or something. Well, there, someone keeps writing me things saying, you know, oh, a wise man once said, you know, uh, that the greatest trick in the first place was to convince everybody that there was a devil. And then when everybody figured out that that was a pretty crazy idea, you know, then the second greatest trick of uh, the devil was to convince everybody that you didn't exist. Well, that kind of just resembles pretty much how the money system was born into being. So they basically convinced everyone, hey, this is great, you know, uh, and, and it's ter uh, yeah, and it's sort of, the devil exists and all that kind of stuff. So they created this monster, and the monster was the monetary system. And then they said to everybody, no, it's just it's part of life, you know, and it's just, it, it doesn't exist, you know, it's just money, you know, and, and that wasn't it. Well, you created because that doesn't exist, you know. So yeah, people were basically living in ignorance that there's a big money system hanging over their heads, keeping them uh, as slaves and making them work for their whole entire lives as payment for keeping the elite on the top and allowing them to do what they want with their lives, which is just kind of play with us really for a little bit, which is kind of fun for them, isn't it? Anyway, hopefully it's about time to check my watch. You guys about time that, you know, the, the divine feminine is going to come back and we're going to get rid of this ridiculously stupid brain of ours because it's so easily manipulated. Uh, luckily the heart isn't so uh, easily manipulated. And that's probably why it's really a lot more intelligent than the brain. That's probably why the Egyptians used to chuck out the brain and get rid of all the other stupid organs because they're completely rubbish. And then just leave the heart in there. I wonder why they did that. Perhaps that's because of belief and knowledge and a lot of the, the functions of our body and the way we think are actually stored in the heart field. The heart field, which is uh, three-dimensional or multi-dimensional, uh, how do you say, multi-dimensional electromagnetic field. And the brain is just a bunch of light flashes just boinking around on a two-dimensional flat sort of, yeah, well, I think you get the picture. The male electric brain is slow and stupid. It only moves at light speeds. The female electromagnetic gravitational field has been there forever and always will be there, and it kind of interacts with everything else in a kind of holographic way, which is enabling it to access a lot more knowledge and information than the brain can ever do. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, well, the brain is also electromagnetic. But yeah, but it's really on a different scale. You know, the heart makes the biggest electromagnetic field of the body. So that is going to be the most important one that controls everything. We're going to get most of our intelligence from. That's probably why the heart is the first organ that's created when you're a little baby swimming around in the womb. It's the most important one that plugs you into the matrix, or the infinite energy and information field, which is the one that they spend so much time trying to destroy and mess with to keep us from experiencing love from a young age until, yeah, the day we die, keeping us really miserable for as long as possible so we can't connect to our heart, and we live in fear, which is the opposite of the heart frequency. So the longer they keep us in fear, the longer they can keep us away from the heart, the longer they can keep us away from finding out exactly what the hell has been going on for the past 2,000 years. 
Anyway, so apparently that, that's, that's what's been happening, and, and right now I guess the biggest thing that they can do to be able to hold the system together is really to make everybody fight one another and be stupid and polarised. So one people, one people? No. So a whole a bunch of society is like, yeah, we're scientists, and we'll, we'll train a bunch of scientists, and we'll, we'll bring them to believing that, you know, there's just a bunch of atoms knocking around and nothing else exists in between, and space is just empty. And then we'll train all the other people to be all religious and stuff, and we give them a, a whole bunch of rules to follow, and a pretty cool book, which kind of sounds about right, but they've got to carry the one, so they're missing a few pages also. And then, you know, so you've got, you got, you got left, you've got right, you've got the ups and you've got the end, you've got the science and you've got the religious types, and pretty much they're all a bunch of rubbish, really. It's all wrong. Yeah, that's pretty much what Michael Jackson was saying, or at least what he was trying to say before he was killed. Whoops. Or is he still alive? Hmm, did he think he death? Well, I guess he always said that you should never trust the media. Hmm. He was a good bloke, really. So yeah, let's get, let's get back to the, uh, what's happening right now. So yeah, they're trying to kind of like pitch us against each other the whole time because that's, you know, really how they, the only way they can keep their power is if we're all fighting down here at the bottom of the pyramids, you know, and, and just keep on giving them money to do what they want to do so they can have their fun. So the longer we fight, uh, well, we're supposed to be brothers, aren't we? That's what Jesus said, I guess. Uh, we're all brothers and, and he's our brother, so he's no different to us and we're all the same people. And yeah, we're brothers and we can do whatever we like because we're infinitely powerful beings. If only we gather together. Just imagine, it'll be like 50, 100 billion against like five people. That would be pretty cool. I think... Uh, yeah, the bigger number would win. Especially if what we know now is that everything is basically consciousness and, and made by images in our mind, which are repeated. So, perhaps if we imagine that we all came together and we imagined the same thing, then we could create miracles together. It's just a hypothesis. If anybody wants to try it, drop me a line. No, there's also research out there that says, or that has shown, that when uh, thousands of children across the world sing in harmony, or hundreds of people, or whatever, they, they do uh, some meditation together and chill out, then crime rates fall and stuff like that. Also, you can see effects changing on the surface of the sun. The sun kind of goes, ah, and all the uh, sunspots that appear and chill out and stuff like that. Yeah, and this is all scientific. It's been measured. It happens. It's statistics. Fair enough. There probably haven't been any placebo-controlled, double-blind, I'm a super idiot studies done, which uh, are aligning with the monetary system also, but I think that's a good thing. Because I don't really agree with all these wonderful placebo controlled double blind and stupid idiot studies. Because all they do, or, well, or they can all be manipulated as well, and they normally are, just to get the right outcome for the investor which invested in the study in the first place. Pretty clever, really, isn't it? Invent a body of science which acts like a god so that everyone religiously obeys the sentence science has shown, or studies have shown. Oh my god, it must be true because science has shown it, studies have shown it. I'm going to blindly believe it, like a double blind idiot. Hello, that's probably why they call it double blind. The blind, leading the blind, yeah. Haha, <laughs> isn't that funny? And they gave us all a bunch of really cool zombie films to watch as well, you know, just to kind of prove a point and, you know, rub it in a little bit. Brains! I want brains! Give me brains! But I don't know where to find them! I'm just gonna... Uh, uh, brains! We're all zombies. Yep. Zombies are us. Human beings. Carbon-based. Life forms. Carbon-6. Six, six on, on the uh, elementary table, my dear Watson. And guess what? It's also got six protons and six neutrons. That makes carbon-based life forms 666, six, six, which is the number of the beast. Oh my gosh, we're living in hell. Uh, isn't that interesting? Anyway, as soon as you guys all figure this kind of crap out, and then the sooner we can get on together and start figuring, and you know, what, what we're going to do next, really. So the only real, real limit on what we can achieve is our own creativity, which is pretty much crushed when we're eight years old, uh, via wonderful school systems. And, um, yeah, sorry. You have to learn rubbish physics and, and, and rubbish chemistry and, and rubbish history and rubbish, uh, yeah, you have to learn all this stuff and then get a job as an accountant and, or, or a banker or, 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 yeah, some other equally useless job. Anyway, sorry for ranting, probably really annoys you guys, so I'm just going to stop doing that. So yeah, uh, this is everything and nothing. You are everything to me, and nothing to them, so you're everything and nothing, um, yeah, realize your power, come together, stop fighting, this is basically what YouTube is for, so stop it, stop it, no, no fighting, no arguing, no religious comments, no, no nasty comments, no, no nothingness, just realize that everything is the same, it all came from the same place, and one went that way, the electric, and, and the other went that way, the magnetic force, uh, female, a male, all that kind of stuff, I'll go into the yin yang a bit, a bit later, it's really interesting, and yeah, that's how it happens, so, you know, Brothers and sisters, uh, come on, let your arms, let's not fight anymore, and let's just realize what they've been doing, you know, they've been pulling the wall over our eyes for too long, and now we're wise, you know, we can see the difference in our eyes, and basically there's no difference between us, you're all a mirror of each other, and we're mirrors of the universe, and the universe is us, that's what they're talking about when all these new ages are saying you should worship yourself, that's not something that the devil does, that's just something that they knew was going to happen, so they told everybody that it's like devil worship, if you were to worship yourself, only, of course, God works through you as a person, so if God works through you, and he's not outside of you, because God is everything inclusive of you, so if you worship yourself, and God through yourself, because God is you, and every cell inside of you is also God, then it doesn't sound so bad after all, and I pretty much trust my own heart to know the difference between good and bad, because if I continue to do bad, I would probably die, and have lots of karma, not to mention, um, because my heart would be so injured and beating at the wrong frequency and I would, I would get sick and I would die because, yeah, I'm not aligned with love. And if I'm not aligned with love and my heart, I would feel a bit sick. Which is probably what a lot of us do feel anyway, because not many of us are aligned with our heart. Anyway, let's try and, let's try and do that also. Another thing, yeah. Work together, be peaceful, look after your heart, 
have heart-centered living. Worship yourself and God through yourself and other people. And, and yeah, don't worry. If you worship yourself, you're not going to fall into the arms of the devil. Uh, it will be okay. Trust me. I'm a scientist. Anyway, this is everything nothing. Peace out.